Welcome back to the Poison Touch Advice Hour, the podcast where Miss Poopy and her friends give you all the best and worst advice to deal with all of life's predicaments. It's August, y'all, and this year has felt like it has gone by so fucking fast, but I am proud and happy to introduce to you all Issa Diamond, my co-host for this month. Issa, how the hell are you? Hi, I'm doing really good. How are you? I'm good. So the girls don't know this about you yet because you haven't done your introduction, but Issa is a social media extraordinaire, a stunning drag queen, a Chicago native or no? No, I'm from California, actually. Word. So we're both transplants. How long have you been in mm-hmm. Chicago? Since like 2018. Okay, so you're... A few years. A couple years older, more, more than me. I came here yeah. in 2020. I know, everything's been downhill since. True, <laughs> truly, 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 and yet, um, Chicago is one of my favorite cities now. So I'm very. I love it so much. I started drag in Vegas, and I grew up running around the streets of LA. Lived in Seattle for a bit, and there's nothing like Chicago. It's just one of those cities, and anyone who hasn't been to Chicago and is like afraid of the cold, or you, you want to visit, but you're like, eh, it's too cold and it's nasty. Come when it's not super cold learn to love it and then you'll want to move here and you'll deal with the cold you'll figure it out or get some of the uniqlo um thermal underwear thingies and some doc martens and you're literally so fine like shut the fuck up yeah my docs keep me through the entire winter right and those uniqlo thermals are really good they're amazing yeah we're not sponsored by uniqlo but uniqlo if you're listening we're available. <laughs> okay. Uh, Issa, tell the people a little bit about yourself. I am Issa Diamond. I am part of the House of Diamonds here in Chicago. It's like one of the biggest um, drag houses here, full of Latin and trans non-binary artists in the house. Mo- all of them are POC and trans non- trans under the trans umbrella somehow. It's a great little... I describe houses like a gang, bitch. We're in a gay gang. It's fierce. Very and nice. I love it so much. <laughs> I've been doing drag since 2016. I'm from California, a really small conservative town. My representative is Kevin McCarthy. Like, it's conservative buta where I am from. For the, for the girls that didn't know California could get like that. It's the only Republican part. It's like crazy. But um, I moved here in pursuit of drag and I've just been chilling, kicking. I'm really into politics and yeah, that's me. I'm chilling. I hate guys right now. You know what? <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Men are uh, no. consistently trash. And I say that as a man. That's the only consistent thing about them is they will consistently let you fucking down. They will consistently have the audacity. It's the one, right. the one thing every man got is the audacity. But yeah, and I'm happy to be here. All right. Like I said, let's do a little wellness, little wellness check. I don't usually do them, but I think it's something I want to add. Yeah, because I started our Zoom call like you're depressing. A little bit. I, I wouldn't even say like necessarily depressing so much as just feeling like very... I guess lost might be a little bit of a better word for it. Tell me why. Which as somebody with an advice stream, um, you know, everyone wants me to have all the answers when that is uh, not the reality, because as I you're like, no, bitch, I started this to get some for me. You're right. Right. Like this is my form of therapy. Like (laughs) this is the Virgo version of therapy is me um, trying to tell people things that I know. Right. That being said, uh, like I like I usually say at every episode, we're not therapists we are not licensed professionals we are uh entertainers all advice Mm -hmm. that we give is for entertainment purposes so we'll do our best but yeah today i'm feeling a little lost it might just be because i had like a really busy weekend and i'm just like trying to get over it Mm -hmm. but i i don't know i've been like sometimes i feel like a need to push myself to go out or to be social and to like be in the club scene a bit more like as a bartender and as someone who knows a lot of nightlife people and like i feel like i got to keep up with that it's so tricky because you work in it and i as a drag queen get that because it's like bitch i'm not going out unless i'm paid to yeah i think you 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 get it more so than any than anyone right now is because like it's very that and i i <laughs> if like i am not out i am home bitch i am home i'm in the gym i'm calling my family i am not in the clubs because you know who goes to this clubs the same people all the time yeah and it's like so a double-edged gets- sword though because like a lot of my friends are out all the time you know and a lot of the nightclub people that i know are out and i feel like i just haven't been there even to like support and like i want to go to shows and i want to support my friends and stuff but i just 
I just haven't been feeling it in me. Then don't go. I know. I'm, you, I'm definitely, you literally in, don't have to. I'm in one of my seasons, you know, like there are times yeah. when I really want to go out and I want to be out like every day and I want to party and stuff like that. And I'm definitely just in like the opposite part of that yeah i will say in that breath of you having phases where you do want to go out go out when you want to yeah because whenever you and don't judge yourself for the times that you don't want to go out because though i say this with my friends who i'm like if you're mad be mad bitch the same way i want you to be extremely happy when you're happy and to feel that to its fullest extent when you want to seclude seclude and don't but don't judge it because That'll allow you to not feel bad and to enjoy your time away and to recharge. And then that way, when you're ready to go out, it'll make it that much more fun. Yeah. And I say all this. Allow yourself to I say this precluding the fact that market days is this weekend. And like that sheer fact alone might make me. Hold up, pause. Yes. Hey, Google. What does preclude mean? Preclude is used as a verb to mean prevent from happening. Got it. Impossible as in. The secret nature of his work precluded official recognition. See, so Thank you. Yeah. Want to hear a few synonyms for <laughs> No, you're good. She said we got a, th- a, th- a thesaurus. Oh, I just Oh, <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> Not a, th- a thesaurus. But continue. Um I don't even remember what I was gonna say. Oh, <laughs> my, oh, oh, so I say all I say all this with the fact that like market days is this weekend and just that like that swirl of energy coming to the city will probably lead me to be like, oh, I actually do want to go out. But it's like yeah. for, for like up until that happens, like I am feeling, I don't know, just very low energy, very like I consider myself an ambivert and it's definitely the introvert leading uh-huh. up to this weekend. Right, right. Um, I've taken a note from the lesbians and I go on walks sometimes. Me, yeah. The lesbians love to go on a walk, bitch. They love a walk. I'm, so a, I'm a bike ride girl. There you go. I'll go for a bike ride to get my like social stimulation and then um, just be home and chill. I, I've stopped judging my my need to stay home because, bitch, if I need to stay home, I need to stay home. Also, if I'm out, I will leave when I want to. I am so fit, notorious for Irish goodbying. So if I'm out on like um, some manic high shit, like, oh, bitch, I'm going to go out like eh, and then I'm out and then my dry, my battery's gone. I'll leave. I pulled one of these a week ago. Actually, I went to Queen. First mistake. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Queen. I usually have a really good time at Queen. Like I just kind of stay with the people that I'm with. I just dance. I, like, I feel the music. You know, I, I try to keep it very chill. I try to not, uh, you know, do all the shenanigans that come with Queen. However, I think where I where I went wrong was I took this edible thinking it would like get me in that dancing mood because I didn't want to drink weed. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I took the edible thinking it was going to hit me like a like like like, you know, dance a Tron moment. Right. Like it's Molly or something, which sometimes it does because I have these little like uh, I ran out. I don't have them anymore. I have to go pick up more. But I have these like little two and a half milligram edibles oh. and they really just like color my day a little bit they make me feel so pretty they make me like want to dance and like skip around that. and stuff like that so like if i had taken one of those i would have had a very different night but the way that the edible took me i said like i took a five milligram one I, I got it from my coworker, so i don't even know what kind of you know right you could, it, it could have been a downer yes and that's how it hit like i was yeah i was there i got so anxious i felt like everyone was staring at me which is just mm. not the reality because Everyone is so fucked up at Queen that nobody is staring at you. That's never the reality that anyone's looking at you. I tell Literally. that to my friends who are scared to go to the gym. I'm like, I promise you, no one gives a fuck about you. Yeah, but the edible was telling me that. So like, I looked, I looked at David. I said, "Girl, I gotta go home." <laughs> yeah, I, I held left. on the lipstick. I said, "I'm going home." <laughs> you whited out the lipstick and said, yep. "I'm going home." I'm going home. And did and you leave? I did leave. I left, but uh, I got. I was Period. so nervous on my walk home because. I live like very close to it. So I walked home and I was passing by the cemetery and I heard this like ungodly scream, which oh, it, no, in reality, bitch, in reality was probably a tire screech. Right. But like to me, which I thought there were, <laughs> I thought there were witches in the graveyard that were going to like, you know, they yeah, were you're like, having a bad high walking by a graveyard and hear a fucking scream, bitch. I would have killed myself. I took the long way home. I, I immediately <laughs> turned around. I it, it like, took another 10 15 minutes from what is normally like a seven minute walk oh yeah. that was not a good trip girl what it was not a good high so yeah i definitely it wasn't a full irish goodbye but i definitely said bye to david and like nobody else I was like i'm leaving yeah. i'm going home yeah 
Well, I'm glad you went home because that's not fun to be out and have that feeling. Oh my God, no. Especially at Queen. I was like, there's too many people. They're all staring at me. Nobody's staring yeah, at me, girl. but I was just... Uh. And, and it's I, fucking hot. I, I was like Queen. enjoying the music before it hit too. So like, I could have gone sober and just have danced to the music like that. Right, and just chilled. Which maybe I should have done, but alas... That's my wellness check-in. How are you doing, Issa? I'm doing good. Um, I just finished one of the longest work weeks I've had in so fucking long. Because I've set up my work week. I've taken inspiration from, like, Norway, New Zealand, and, like, more progressive countries where I've budgeted all my bills, seen what I need uh, to pay, and cut my hours and cut some things that I pay for um, so that I can not work five days. I do not endorse a five day work week. I think that's psychotic and so fucking barbaric. Same. Um, so I do a three to four day work week. Work. I'm um, a four day work week girl. I love it because the first day off you can recover. The next one you can do your errands. And then the third one is for you. Yes. Period. So I just finished one of the longest work weeks I've had in so fucking long because some shit at work happened. And I am just ready to seclude and just rest my body and just relax and chill. Um, Enough guys have given me the ick where I am no longer dating or seeking anything from anyone. Taking a break, taking Um, a break. Oh yeah, bitch. And so, yeah, I'm just chilling. Nice, good. Yeah, I I think more people need to get on the three to four work week. Yes, Uh, absolutely, bitch. What? Because this is another part of like, I guess I was feeling a little lost thinking. I I sometimes think to myself, how long am I going to continue bartending? Is it something I see myself doing long term? It's such like it, it is a toll on your body. And I, it yeah, do- I'm, a, I'm a server, so I, I yeah. feel you. But it does afford me the ability and the free time to do things like this and yeah. to like have a lot of time to edit. And then t- things like like I'm holding a D&D one shot, by the way, for those of you listening to the, the Twitch stream right now. If you're listening to the podcast version, it will have already happened. You can catch it on YouTube. I'm doing a D&D one shot. It is Pokemon Mystery Dungeon themed this week. It'll be very fun. Oh. It's going to be uh, a cute little adventure and Clefable is here to grant everybody's wishes with the help of Joshi. <laughs> it's going to be very fun. The work. So, yeah, but I'm like, I have the, the free time afforded because of my, my job as a bartender. But sometimes I'm like, is this something I want to do full time or should I start looking at like corporate jobs? Because I worked at a news company for uh, a while before oh. I moved here. So what I, were you doing there? I was a producer making YouTube content and Instagram content and things like that. So work, bitch. That's sickening. Why would you, why did you quit that? Uh, the pandemic hit and I was stuck in my apartment in Brooklyn yeah. and I just didn't have it in me. It Are just, you from it, New York? I'm from Jersey originally, but I was living oh. in Brooklyn at the time when the pandemic hit and like the slog of trying to come up with content while being stuck in your house and like nothing's happening. Cause yeah. the thing that fed me the most in that job, I've told this story on the podcast, I believe, but the thing that fed me the most as uh, working at the news company was talking to people and doing my own interviews and like really, you know, pounding pussy to pavement, going to get the story. Mm-hmm. Like that was my favorite thing. Investigative so, journalism. Yes. Please. So w- okay. when, when the pandemic hit and I like couldn't do any of that, aside from like finding people and zooming them, Mm. along with the fact that like in new york everyone was just stuck in their house it was like a a pain to even go get groceries it was just a lot so i i just i had to quit and then i moved out here because i just needed change yeah that's real as fuck i mean i always a, a quote that's been getting me to work outside of like the the hours i'm clocked in recently has been don't be afraid to put in work after work towards your dreams, I guess. And so that has been kind of uh, fueling me to do some of the projects that I want to do and I'm more passionate about outside of my um, regular job. So I will pass that along to you and be like, don't be afraid to put in work after work. And this is my work after work is stuff like this. But eventually it might, it might, if I ever decide to stop bartending, I would probably go back to news stuff. So I don't know. Yeah, that sounds lovely. (sighs) All right. Shall we, enough, enough about us shall we get into these questions and help out some people yeah i'm so excited uh i've noticed okay so i've been watching your podcast for a while not a lot of people give toxic advice they really give their best attempt at helping people and i'm like bitch i want to see y'all suffer for the plot 
and th- that's why we're here. This is why we're here. Sometimes we're here to give bad advice. It's called yeah, the best it's... and worst advice. Oh, it's a, I yeah. would always recommend people take the best advice, but I'm not afraid. Let, let's give some bad advice today. I love giving messy advice. I am a bipolar Pisces with all my houses in fire signs. So I love being messy and seeing shit go down. I love it. I love it. I love it. Perfect. And I think what struck me of being like, oh, I need Issa on the podcast was I had seen, I saw that video you posted. You're like on your bed, kicking your feet in the air. Yes, I'm literally that like, la, 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 where it said toxic things I do on purpose. Yes, which. I had a list. Would you mind, before we actually get into these questions, would you mind sharing one or two of those things and yeah, then encouraging I, people again, of course, to go to your Instagram and actually view the video? Um, So I have a list of things that I like to talk about in case I ever am in a situation where I don't know what to talk about. It's just random thoughts that I have. Like, whatever, whatever, whatever. So I have this list of things that I just used to do on purpose. So I used to get people's name wrong on purpose at jobs to establish this barrier between us. Like, we are not friends. So say your name was Jake. I'd be like, hey, Mark, so today we're going to be doing this, that, and the third. And then, because Mark's getting too comfortable. Jake's getting too comfortable, bitch. You need to back up. Mark. Uh And I'd be like, I'm so sorry. Oh, my God. Um, Or forgetting. I haven't visited this list in a while. Oh, I used to do this all the time where I used to forget things that um, say I'm talking to you. And I'm like, was it you that I told this thing and that thing? And then I would say something that would probably like make you upset or jealous. And then you're like, no, that wasn't me. Must have been your other boyfriend. Yes, especially to romantic partners because they say that. And I love engaging with that response. I'd be like, "Mm, yeah, I must have. (laughs) <laughs> see or, and this is why like as a principal i have never said that phrase must have been your other boyfriend because because bitch you play around you're gonna find out exactly i've always been like no it wasn't me it must have been one of your other friends like, it right. must have been someone else but it was not me i'm never gonna accuse it of being your other boyfriend though because that <laughs> just leads to messiness i used to text every guy i was talking to at the moment when i was going to someone's house to seem like i'm getting blown up I'd be like, hey, 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 so that their all responses are, hey, 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 and it makes it look like they're texting me. And I'm like, oh my God, like, they'll be like, who was that? I was like, no one, like, don't worry about it. <laughs> are you someone who cares whether or not people put their phone up or down at a table? No, I really don't. And I hate, I kind of hate people that make you feel bad for it. Right? Okay, see. I'm like, bitch, shut up. Yeah. Because sometimes I just be put it down. I, I, I really. I don't know, like it doesn't occur to me as a thought, but to some people it is like yeah. that big of a thing. And so like I'll usually just throw my phone down or I'll put it in my pocket, especially if I'm like out to dinner or whatever. But I saw a screenshot from TikTok on, today on Twitter that said it was this girl that said when I'm out with my friends and we're both on our phones, sometimes I like to put my phone down and make it seem like he's my boyfriend who's ignoring me. <laughs> and I'm like, that's very me coded. I love that. Is that going to make it's it so into the, the second episode? Wait, it's did- going to put in the in the next list. It's going to have one. that part. Yeah. Um, I like so this mirror right here. I like turning it towards my bed when I'm getting fucked because it's kind of hot watching. So when I have a guy over who like I'm seeing consistently, right? I don't even have to move. (laughs) You get it. I'll turn it towards my bed and that person knows. So they're like, oh, and I'm like, oh, and then I'll go flip it back to its original. And I'm like, nothing. (laughs) Real quick. I want to read this comment real quick that we got. This is making my my day so much better. Thank you, Jake and Issa. No problem, Polly. I'm glad glad you're enjoying it. But yeah, so I'm the girl to give you toxic advice. So yeah, if if you haven't already, go to Issa's Instagram at Issa the Queen. You can see it right below um, on the on the screen. If you're watching the video version, go find Period. that video. It's it is so wild. It's great. I love it so much. But we're gonna start with our first question. It is a story time. Actually, it is from Jack Frost, and they write. So, the summer after I graduated high school, I was single and ready to mingle. This guy I'd gone to school with since middle school hit me up and wanted to do dinner and a movie. He'd never come out, but I had always felt like he was a little fruity, so I assumed this was him asking me out on a date and said yes. I wasn't about to make the first move since I wasn't sure if he was gay, but I made it pretty obvious that I wanted him to. For example, taking up the whole armrest at the theater, flirty looks, and comments. And yet, not once did he make a move on me. 
that's where another guy comes in. We'll call him Kevin. Kevin worked at the theater we went to and we had been chatting for a few weeks at this point. The guy I was on a date with had taken me to IHOP or something, and from what I could tell had no romantic interest in me, so I texted Kevin and asked him to pick me up. I ditched the guy I went out with to go to, back to Kevin's place, who I had only met in person that day, and made out for a while, and I'd do it again. Don't ask me on a date if you're not gonna try at <clears throat> least to hold my hand. Period. I love them. See, in this instance, we don't even necessarily need to give them the toxic advice. What what advice do they need? There wasn't a question. It's a story time. The story times are oh. like we, the story time. Here's how it works. The story times we reflect on them for the person. Yeah, that's crazy. Okay, so first of all, the guy who asked you out to dinner in a movie, he probably what time? I want to know what time he asked you at. I want to know what time and where the moon was in the planets. But um. I don't think you should feel bad. If anything, fuck yeah, Kevin, for coming through. Kevin sh is showing that they're consistent, they have a job, and that they're gonna make out with you and give you the affection that you deserve. I hate, I don't go after straight guys. I hate pursuing DL or straight guys, because A, I think it's weird to pursue somebody who doesn't like claim the lifestyle that you live. Yeah. Because a lot of those DL guys, it's a lot of internalized self-hate and homophobia that they will have with them that they need to deal with and is not fun to fucking be around, I swear to God. It's not. It's like it is such a pain to try and hide yourself around somebody. Like I, for the same reason also do not go after DL men. No, bitch, like you guys are fucking lame. Come the fuck out. It's 2023. Nobody gives a fuck about what you put. I yeah. saw a video of a guy putting his dick in pasta flashlights, girl. You think anyone's going to give a fuck that you put your dick in me? No, bitch, you're fucking crazy. Also, I hope yeah. you did not pay for that ticket and he better have paid for the ticket, period. He better have. And you know, the thing is, is like, I feel like, wait, not Kevin. The other guy was probably like waiting. So it was going to be a movie. It was going to be dinner or whatever. And then it was going to be, oh, do you want to go home and smoke? And that's when he oh would have had, God. that is when he would have had the courage to finally start something. I remember in the high school, I used to, I'm from an area that's really gangster, 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 Norteño, Sureño, down, bitch. And these guys would wait till they're drunk. And I remember telling one in specific that we were like, kind of like at a party after everyone left, we're chilling, kicking. And he started like drinking because I was like flirting with him. And then I told him, I was like, yeah, go ahead and drink. So you can blame the alcohol when you put your dick in me. Ow. And he just like laughed. But now like that's cute when you're in high school and there's no other gay person in town. Girl, fuck this guy. He's crazy. Yeah. And that's, I think, why she, they went to like the movie with him because they said they said I graduated high school with them and middle school, like all these like nostalgic times. Like, no, bitch, we're moving on. Yeah, like it is, it's cute for a moment, but you know, when it's over, it's over. And I'm glad that that Jack Frost decided to be like, actually, you know what? This like isn't worth my time. Yeah, I could just go with this guy who move. works at the theater, right? Go I will get me never. Free all the time. Yeah, honestly, I'm like, people leave dates for a lot of reasons, and some of them are are good, and some of them are bad. Have you ever left a date? Have I ever left a date? I honestly, I don't date that much, so oh. no, I've never left a date. I've left oh. hookups before for sure. Woof. Tell me about it. Oh, none of them are like ex 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 that interesting. There was definitely this one guy where like he pulled up to pick me up in his car and it was like a completely different person. <gasps> and I just didn't even get it. But that like at that you point. You said, oh no, someone else is picking me up. Yeah. I was like, oh, <laughs> oh wrong Uber. Sorry. Like, <laughs> right. I yeah. left a date because this guy, I, t I was telling him about like my history, about how like, because at the time I moved here, my mom had just passed away. And so I was kind of telling him about that a little bit. And then we were eating and then I asked him, do you want a napkin? Because he's fucking making a mess. And he's Ooh. like, no, my parents actually raised me right. Like I know Ooh. how to eat. And I was just like, as he's making I, a mess, as he's making a mess. And I was like, they clearly fucking didn't you pig. And I got up and grabbed a napkin and like threw it at him. And then he one day, he, like one time he brought up. Wait, what the, were y'all eating? Was in the same, we were at Portillo's. OK, but um, we were on the same date and he was talking about like, yeah, so things become like serious. Like, I would love to meet like your mom and like your dad. And, the, and I was just like, you know, I just told you my mom died. Like, yeah, why so he you? just wasn't even listening. And then I was like, you know what? I gotta go. You're really not fun to be around. And I told him that and I left. Work. You know, when I first moved here, I thought Portillo's was Portillo's. 
Because <laughs> you're a paisa, bitch. <laughs> I was like, oh. And then I was like, wait. Technically, you're right. These are hot dogs. Right? Portillos. It's the two L's that makes it Y in Spanish. Like, girl, yeah. fuck out of here. And then I just, and then I was like, oh, they just, they just sell like chicken sandwiches and hot dogs. <laughs> and then I was like, but okay, good Portillos. good for Jack Frost, bitch. Good for Jack Frost for leaving that yeah. fucking date. Good for Jack Frost. Um, send My more ten. toxic stories. We love them. All right, Isa, next one. So this is from the Goonies, which I don't really know what gooning means. Is it that face? Oh, okay. We we'll have a whole. We, okay, once you read the question, we'll get into the definition for gooning. I almost refuse to look it up because, anyways, anyways. Um, so the Goonies says, "I can't jerk off anymore ever since I started playing Pokemon Sleep because I'm scared of the recordings at night and I don't want to turn it off because I think it's a cool feature." To which I asked you, what is Pokemon Sleep? Okay, so I'm, I'm, uh, we're going to do two things first. I'll talk about what gooning is, and then yeah. we'll talk about Pokemon Sleep. Okay, period. So, gooning is a phenomenon, which apparently the girl said I had the definition wrong at first, and then I learned what it was. However, oh. I think it means something different to both straight people and gay people. The girls people. being booty origami. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> very that Mario was like here's what gooning is right. um, so I thought it, here, here's what I initially thought it was I thought it was like this porn addiction phenomenon where people have like multiple screens and like oh. and, and porn is in like eight windows on all of the screens it's like a dark room and they just sit there and they jerk off for hours that, that. actually refers to a goon cave so that is a goon cave. This is that's more of a straight thing. So like when straight guys are in their goon cave and they goon, it's less so referring to like that face and more so referring to like the porn addiction of it all and just jerking Whoa. off for hours. But when, gooning is a face. Yes. Yeah, so when, okay. the, when the way queer people talk about it, gooning is like that face. And it is about being like so horny as you're jerking off or that you like lose your like will and you just go cross-eyed and your tongue lolls out of your mouth and you just I like guys you just give it up to the to you know <laughs> to the feeling you know oh i hate f slurs i hate them i hate them with it's, all my heart. it's very much like i'm just a whole sir i'm 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 i'm, I'm just a little fag it's, there, it's very that woof. woof it is very that so that is like that that version of gooning but initially i just thought it was the goon cave mm. stuff which which kind of scared me a little bit when i had heard that that's psychotic and you guys need help but the goonies has no correlation to this text and then pokemon sleep is pokemon sleep is a <clears throat> new app we're not sponsored but if the pokemon company does want to reach out to me hopefully not for a cease and desist <laughs> 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 then then please sponsor me pokemon sleep is a sleep aid app where you take care of a snorlax every week and so every night when you go to sleep you feed the snorlax three times a day like a tamagotchi Okay. And you collect berries and every night when you go to sleep, it tracks your sleep by putting like your phone on your bedside table or on your bed or whatever. So it tracks your sleep. It gives you like a score. So if you get like a good seven and a half, eight hours, you get like a hundred. And then based on that, Pokemon oh. will come and visit you as you sleep and you can catch them in the morning when you wake up. Oh, so it's supposed to like promote and encourage and incentivize you getting a good night's sleep yes. so that you can get these better Pokemon. Yes, the same Which way. Which sounds good in practice. Yeah, like the in same theory, way that I there mean. are like apps where people like every time you drink water, like, you know, water's a plant or whatever. You know what I mean? Like yeah. one of those little like self-help gamifying self-care type things. Which people have all sorts of feelings on whether those are actually good or not. Like Pokemon Sleep. I was going to say, I can't believe people need an app and in, in, an incentive to do the bare minimum as a human being. That's kind of crazy to me, but no, yeah. you know, work, go off that. And I say I'm this as somebody it. who like, since using Pokemon Sleep, no, partly. You use it? I do use it. I love it. It's great. Oh. <laughs> it's okay, great. I, I, I caught a Krogonk. I caught a Slowpoke. And I was like, I caught my favorites. Now I'm just kind of like casually playing it. Yeah. But I think part of it is ever since John moved in, my sleep schedule has gotten better. Because before he lived here, I would be up until like five in the morning most nights. I'm that girl too. Now it's like, it's only like two, three in the morning. So it's definitely like a little okay. better. But yeah, it's like Pokemon Sleep does give me a little incentive to like get to bed on time. Yeah. So well, it, it's I like, think if you need that to kind of help you get on track towards doing that, I think that's a great thing. 
Yeah. I, but this person said they can't jerk off anymore since okay. they started it. Here's the thing. We're going to get into the question. But before we do that, I did want to, like, gamifying your own self-care can be a good thing or a bad thing. Like, as long as it gets to a point. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I think I could see how it could definitely reach an extreme for some people where, like, it then yeah. becomes, like, a detriment. Yeah. Um, so if you are playing Pokemon Sleep or you're doing any of those, like, water apps or anything like that, just make sure you're doing it in moderation to the point where you are, you know, doing better, building better habits for yourself, but not to the point where yeah, it becomes very a that. Not where you're relying on it to get sleep. Yes. Now, onto this confession. I can't jerk off anymore since I started playing Pokemon Sleep. Girl, just jerk off before you hit the sleep button. Like, why are you waking up at 3 a.m. and, like, fucking rubbing your little dick? Like, what are you doing? Like, the thing is, it's like, they your might. phone is always... Your phone is always listening. It's always listening. Like, and I'm the type of like psycho where like if a relative passes away, I'm like they're always watching me. They're gonna watch me jerk off. Like ew, ew, ew. But I think don't you know you gotta I, you gotta look in the in the empty corner of the room when you jerk off and be like yeah I know you look it right. <laughs> put on a show, baby. If they're fuck if Pokemon Sleep is listening to you jerk off, put on a fucking show, bitch. Let them fucking listen. You better. I want to hear vocal <laughs> vocal shit. It better come up on that microphone too. All right. Yep. Anybody to shoot on that motherfucking wall, bitch? What? Yeah, let Pokemon Sleep capture that. Uh huh. Ca- <laughs> catch that. <laughs> right. But yeah, just, I don't know. it is deeply unserious. This, this confession I thought was so fucking funny. It's psychotic for sure, and I'm learning a lot. I feel like this sentence and this like little screenshot category on this Google Doc is perfectly encapsulating of what your podcast is. Yeah, none of these words are. <laughs> none of these words are in the Bible. If you took this and sent it to a colloquial, colloquial like colonial woman, she would have a heart attack. Uh, hell, the the people working at the Pokemon company listening to our sleep recordings are gonna have a heart attack when they hear it. Work. Uh huh. You know those memes <laughs> where it's like people afraid to moan in their girl's ear. I be in my Pokemon Sleep app like. Uh, are there uh, guys that are afraid to moan in their girl's ear? I think so. I believe so. It's a whole genre of memes, so I it has to be a thing. Kill yourself. I want it. You better be on those Pokemon sleep recordings like Akira, Akira, leave me alone. <laughs> right. like, I want to hear all that. Ew, I hate it. All that just full on screens. I want to hear like Jojo Bizarre Adventure, like, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. like, okay. we, we need the noises, okay? <laughs> the comments say straight so men are much. terrified of enjoying themselves. And that. Right. Like, you guys are fucking psychotic. That is true. Straight men are afraid to enjoy themselves. Well, Goonies, don't be afraid to goon while Pokemon sleeping. Also, your phone's always listening to you. Yeah, so... Like, what's the difference? Your data's always being collected. It knows what kind of porn you like. Fuck it. You're in a surveillance state. Who cares? The next time, The next time you goon and you get, like, an Instagram ad the next day for, like, for lube or for hymns or something like that, you know, just know that they're always listening. Who cares? Get over it. Yep. All right. Next one. This one is from Tough Decisions. It's a general advice question. They write, without giving too much away, I'm faced with an opportunity to do something very shady in regards to a group that I'm involved in. Or I can take the moral high road. How do you weigh the two options when deciding whether or not being shady and toxic is a better option? This question was like basically... This was like craft, curated cr- curated and crafted with you in mind. So I'm just, I'm going to let you run. I promise you, take it, when they go low, we go to hell. Be lower than them. Fuck the moral high road. That shit don't have any Starbucks or any McDonald's on that road. I promise you, going the more shady and toxic route is going to be so much more fun. Fun. And I'm in a sort of hedonistic era where, like, I am going to do things where I'm going to do it for my enjoyment and my pleasure because I think it's fun and funny. Works. Fuck your feelings unless it kills you or it literally keeps you from like, like I'm, I'm morally, I will never keep somebody from working or like ruin their job. So unless it keeps people from dying or like making their money and it seems fun, like fucking do it. You seem like a chaotic, like energy tough decisions and i think you should follow your instincts and be really toxic and really shady because it's really fun and i hate to make the comparison of the angel and the devil on your shoulder but 
let's do uh what what is not an angel and devil they're just two devils right but one is just like the lesser devil (laughs) i'm here to let you know i agree however i do think it's worth spending some time weighing the pros and cons and weighing how much drama you will be making by taking the shadier route. Also, and if you take the shady route, you better do that with your fucking chest. Don't your do chest. it. You gotta Don't do t- it and then be apologetic. Down. Yep. Exactly. That's what, so that's that's basically is what I'm gonna say. It, it, weigh out how much drama you're going to make by choosing this, and then decide based on that whether or not it's worth doing because if you if you're like weighing it in your head and you're like it would do this this and this and that's actually a lot of drama and i actually don't like i would rather just do it and run away no at that point just take the moral high road and then when shit hits the fan inevitably you're there to say well i told you so right if it's gonna hit the fan it's gonna hit the fan whether or not you you know have a hand in it like i have a quote that i've been living by right now where like people's um downfall is not preying on people's downfall is not enough i need to partake in it (laughs) and if you cannot be a bad bitch and partake in that shit with your motherfucking chest then don't do it don't be a pussy ass bitch and black out and be like oh i'm sorry like i shouldn't have said that thing to that person like no bitch be like yeah i said it because you said it and you need to say it with your chest too work and if you don't want to be like directly involved but you want to influence events just know that that could blow up in your face and if you do it you need to be very strategic about the ways in which you decide to tell certain people certain things keep track you hear that that's the sound of wine being poured no 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 that's wine being poured this is what you should do Pour, pour your wine and watch it explode yes but <laughs> but yeah end of the day definitely you have to weigh your options very carefully in my my advice i weigh yeah. your options or you know if you're if you're in it to win it take a toxic route i love being toxic however i think i think sometimes taking the moral high ground like I don't know. Sometimes there is a certain satisfaction to it. It may not be as fun, but being there when she hits the fan and you just got to be like, well, you see, being above it can be fun. And that's why I say when they go low, you go to hell. If this has nothing to do with you, probably stay out of it. If this has nothing to do with you, stay yeah, out of it. I, I wish I had a little more information. It's just that I, a group that I'm involved in. I wish we had yeah, gotten they like a little more. Yeah, without giving too much away, bitch. We're doing a podcast. Give everything Girl, away. Give You're it fucking away. Whack. This is a reminder. All of the uh, submissions are 100% anonymous. So like if there is a chance to give stuff away, like this is the time to give it away. Be, use pseudonyms. Like what? Yeah, like 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 uh, like Jack Frost did. We had, we had exactly. Kevin, you know, like use pseudonyms. Give us information because the more information that we have, the better advice we we can give because we could be saying to take the toxic route and bitch they're talking about like premeditated murder you know like (laughs) and in that case we do not advocate for that and that's why i said as long as you're not taking anyone's job and as long as you're not harming anybody yeah so like like i wish we had a little more context for it but that's pretty much all i have to say period well i have the next little bracket here this paragraph this is from somebody called Polly Rised. Hi, I've been having a big problem recently with comparing myself to others I see on IG, and it's made me pretty depressed. I always see people with friends, partying, clubbing, drinking, etc., and it makes me feel lame and like a loser because I don't enjoy those things. I don't have many friends and I have different interests. I don't love the skin I'm in, I can't look in the mirror at myself, and I always feel like I'm on the verge of tears. Any advice would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Additionally, I don't have any self-confidence that can never muster up the courage to take photos of myself or even put myself out there on the apps whenever i go on instagram people are just so attractive and here i am looking like trash and it's really discouraging and puts me down a lot whenever i try to talk to people or react to something people leave me on scene and it just makes me feel like i'm not good enough which makes me feel worse honestly anything to help would be greatly appreciated okay so, First of all, I need some props for reading that really well. You did, you did. You're very good reading, you know. <laughs> we And the listeners let me know every month whether or not the co-host was a good reader or not. Really? So they, they do. The DMs on the podcast account where it's like, you know, this oh. co-host read that really well, you know. And when it's you not, know what it's I like, want to do for one of my Instagrams? The, the hooked on phonics is a hooked on phonics thing. 
Girl. What are you doing for the Instagrams? I want to do a thing where people come over and read their draft tweets. Like things they tweeted, they wrote, but didn't have the balls to fucking tweet out. Oh, we could do that right now. Let's read one each. Bitch, let's let's okay, read let's one, do one each and then we'll get into right Polly now. Rest. And then we'll get into Polly's advice because reading Polly's questions, it, it did break my heart a little bit. Cause like, I know when I read it, I like, like preparing for this, I was like, mm, like that it, it sucks. Hurts. Like it, I've definitely been there. Ju- just like hearing that negative self-talk and, and like the way that they talk about themselves. But anyway, really quick draft tweets. I'm going to read uh, a couple. So... This first one says, how do you serve cunt in? And then it, I feel like this one translates more if you were to read it as a tweet. It says, how do you serve cunt in? And then it's got a dash. And then it's asterisk, gunshot, asterisk. Because How do you what? How do you serve cunt in blank? Because you remember that was like a Twitter trend. Yeah. How do you serve cunt in blah, 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 whatever. And I was so tired of it that I was about to tweet. How do you serve cunt in? Gunshot. Enough. That's, that's, (laughs) That's the tweet. The second one I have, it's a, it's a picture of Storm from the X-Men comic Life Death. And Storm, it reads, are you okay? And she says, alive, hurt, but whole. And then the um, caption to that tweet just says, after bottoming. <laughs> Bitch, what? Uh, are you a, to- are you a top? Um, You're verse, right? Yes, 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 yes. Um, I have one that says, how are you still allowed... How are you still allowed around arcades? <laughs> Our girl kept calling my phone looking for someone. And when I hung up and she kept after she kept calling me back, I answered the fourth time. I said, I don't know who the fuck you think you're you are a bitch. But don't you ever call me this early and blow up my shit. And she didn't call back. What time was it? Um, This was it doesn't say the time. Oh, OK, but it, it was early. I was early for me. I don't care if it was 12. That's early for me. OK, I have one here that says. Mine says a, a Dior hijab fucking work. <laughs> <laughs> this one says no, because the only thing to be mad about is you taking up all the oxygen with that long ass neck. Sad oh? face. <laughs> I, I can't even see what this is in response to. Oh my Similarly, God. Similarly, sick of y'all being ugly. LOL. <laughs> Bitch, what? Oh my God. This one is. I think I meant to write seated for Black Panther because I was about to watch the movie. It says seared for Black Panther. Come on, being seared in a G- yes, uh, George seared. Foreman. My class is discussing how Harvey Weinstein is racist because he didn't prey on black women. Question, question, question. I hate it here. Oh, <laughs> this will say DJ name. Jack off all trade. Girl. Bitch, what? Girl. <laughs> what was I on? You're a psycho. Jack off all trade. No, when you see me DJ. That's a good one. Jack of all trades. Yeah, Jack of oh all trades, God. but it's just Jack off all trade. I love that. That's when you great, see actually. me start DJing, and that's my DJ name. <laughs> um, but back to Polly Rise. Okay. Yeah. Um comparison this- is the destroyer of joy. Yes. And I want to say that to her again or whoever they are, whatever their pronouns are. Comparison is the destroyer of joy. You kind of like if you read this back to yourself, you always see your friends partying, clubbing, drinking. But it makes you feel lame because you don't like those things. And this goes kind of like this is kind of what we talked about up top. It kind of goes hand in hand with that about how I was feeling a little lost about yeah, being out. This, it's, I don't it's like getting punched similar. in the head. You think because I see my friends getting punched in the head that I'm going to be fucking missing out because I want to be. Pun- no, bitch, I don't like that. So yeah. why would you feel bad for something you don't even enjoy? You must be under 20, 25, because I promise you, the older you get, the more you will realize that like I life is too short to be spending it doing something that I don't enjoy. Yeah, like I, these, I wouldn't be at the clubs just because your friends are at the clubs. Like, if you don't like it, you don't like it. And that just means you have to find an outlet for you to, like, be with your people that right. doesn't necessarily involve drinking. And that can be tough, especially with younger folk. Because yeah. I feel like, you know, so many people are focused on on clubbing and, and being out all the time and stuff like that. But if that's not, it's not, it's not, if that's not for you, you know, don't force yourself to do it. 
no bitch we are both in our houses right now and yeah. we are getting like this social fix that we like may need without having to go in person and go out into the world i am an introvert masquerading as an extrovert like you cannot be <sighs> introverted in this but personally every year for my birthday i my biggest gift that i I'll tell anyone if you ever want to get me anything this is the biggest thing you can get me is leave me alone for my birthday let me just be by myself and do nothing if anything partake in making sure i don't have to do anything on my birthday yeah because i like doing nothing i like not being around people i like not socializing like i like having my alone time i like who enjoying myself as a person i like myself and i like being alone with myself yeah bring me like an iced coffee a donut a little snack like give me a hug and be like enjoy your day girl yeah Bye. uber eats me something <laughs> bitch what yeah you know what do you have to say to people that don't love the skin that they're in so especially because it comes rooted from comparing yourself to people on social media this is something we've tackled numerous times on this podcast yeah, we, we tackle this a quite times. often yeah it's one of those things that we tackle so often because it is ever present like even people that are super self-confident like i consider myself generally a very confident person but of course there are times when you know i find myself comparing myself to other people and and you know having that be at a detriment to myself not loving the skin that you're in that is something like remedying that like even no matter what we tell you it's going to take time and my favorite thing that i have said 800 fucking thousand times on this podcast is like finding one thing about yourself every day to compliment yourself on and using that as a very small way to kind of build that self-love you know what i mean because the second you start comparing yourself on Instagram or Twitter or TikTok or anything like that, you always have to re remind yourself that people are showing the best of themselves. The best of themselves. Yeah. And even when they're not showing, quote unquote, the best of themselves, like if someone's crying on camera, just laugh a little bit because, you know, they had to set up their camera. They had to stop right. crying, set up the camera, make sure the angle was there and then go back to crying. So even that isn't real. Things that you're seeing on social media aren't all real. So it's like if you remind yourself of that, it becomes much easier not to compare yourself. Yeah, I also have these tattoos on my chest that say fake and real and one of them is backwards because in high school I had this problem where I was constantly comparing myself to people. I was constantly dysphoric in my gender and everything. And so I got these so that when I look in the mirror, I can remind myself that what I'm looking at is temporary and it's not real and that, you know, everything's kind of a facade and smoke and mirrors and whatever, whatever. Um, having little things to remind yourself that this is all just a front is helpful and like you said finding one thing about yourself i remember when bob the drag queen said this on drag race season eight it changed like everything for me where he was like even if you like that one tooth on you see this is where like it comes from tooth. it comes from that like after hearing that i was like that like that is like I, i'm taking that to my grave because it's not that you're obsessed with this tooth it is creating a new like neurological way of thinking and of talking to yourself and of this dialogue it's creating Creating that which is like the road to that is not from a to z it's made up of b and c and d and e and those little in between letters are the present moment so i feel like you should always try to be present with yourself and to just be more like gentle to yourself like yeah. i have i you know in my youth have attempted suicide and like i had gone through it i've been bipolar i've been depressing anxious on medication whatever and no one is gonna be able to look out for you and love you and talk to you and take care of you the way that you will do to yourself my dad told me when i was young that when you die there's only room for you in your casket so you better make sure that that person which is you that's in there with you is somebody that you enjoy mm -hmm. you need to learn to love and to talk to yourself nicely because self-talk is everything it is it's everything it might not seem like a lot like you might just be like oh but i'm you know i'm just being self-deprecating or you know things like that but no like self-talk really has an effect on the way that you see yourself and even so much as like learning to change those things like how you talk about yourself and how you see yourself how you talk it about yourself also, to other people it really just changes your own perception of yourself you teach people how to treat you so when you talk shit about yourself and make fun of yourself and say you ain't shit and this and that, it allows other people to do that to you. Yeah. And I'll be damned if I let anybody else talk to me the way that I've talked to me. Yeah. So, bitch, change that shit. Change it's that shit. Even so, if it's fake. So easy to be your biggest critic, but you really yeah. just have to... 
you have even when like shit is putting you down you got to put yourself up always right and also all these people you're looking at on instagram on tiktok on twitter they are all probably depressed they are all probably anxious they do coke they do ketamine (laughs) they're getting fisted like bitch these bitches ain't fucking shit they don't have debt their rent isn't paid they haven't taken out their trash they have a shit stain in their fucking toilet their shit stinks like girl these are human beings like that girl don't be caught up in the smoke and mirrors those people ain't shit and be nice to you because you're only got you yes and if you're into fisting then stand in that yeah, yeah up. <laughs> let's see what else i got in here the part about uh mustering up the courage to take photos of yourself how would you break through that because for me i i like getting air i get in moments where i'm like i'm gonna take a bunch of photos of myself and then for like a month i won't want to take any photos of myself i'm like don't perceive me but like i will have just times where i'm like take photos blah blah blah, blah. and that'll be the yeah. photo i post in like two months you know what i mean so So i try to take note of what it is in that moment that is making me feel confident and cute enough to take pictures so i it's usually 90 percent of the time a haircut yeah a haircut will do it bitch there is nothing more powerful than a gay 24 to 48 hours after a haircut yeah and if that makes you confident bitch last summer i went once a week because i want to always feel cute i want to always feel cute if it's if it's you know going to the gym and seeing the progress then go to the gym more often if it's getting a haircut go get that if it's having clear skin then focus on a skincare routine get your eyebrows done do something that makes you feel cute dress in a nice outfit during the pandemic the amount of times my ex would always be like why are you getting dressed up you know you're not going anywhere and i was like because i want to because it makes me feel cute yeah so when you're on those highs of take wanting to take some pictures of yourself, looking in the mirror, being like, okay, like I look kind of cute today, whatever, then remember what it is in that moment so that in the moments where you're low, you can call back on that and be like, oh, well, I should probably try to be try to do that more often. Yeah. All right. This comment real quick says, unironically, I got self-confidence from fingering myself in the mirror. I'm so serious. <laughs> Th- that's an option. Finger yourself in the mirror, sister. <laughs> Stick that, so fierce. S- stick that dildo on your mirror and look back at it yeah i didn't have the co- any confidence for the longest fucking time i swear to god but it wasn't until i started changing dialogue with myself also just accepting that like i look like this decolonize your mind and decolonize the beauty standards that you have set that were forced upon you throughout the the time that you've been on this earth and that you've been raised because i promise you a lot of the insecurities you have come from racist like backgrounds yeah white supremacy will find a way to weasel its way into everything and that includes self-confidence the way we talk about ourselves the way we see ourselves so that is good advice like learning to just be like yeah this is how i look i look how i look and how i look is great i'm like i'm mexican what do mexicans look like oh cool i look like the rest of them cool also realizing that like you don't have to be at 100 self-confidence isn't always about being at 100 no self-confidence it fluctuates you could be at 100 some days if you're at 100 one day a year that's that's you know that is what every it day is. i aim for 50 50 like we don't aim for 100 we aim to feel no. just you know a little bit a little bit of ourselves a little good Period. so the next time you give me an update i expect to hear a little more positive self-talk i want to hear even if you're still going through it let's let's at, at the very least in your update if you're still going through it and you're like thank you so much for the advice but I, I still am feeling bad for blank, blank, and blank. I at least want to hear better self-talk from you. Let's start with that. So next month when you write in, because I expect to update, sister. Also, there's always that. fixes to things. If it's because you're insecure about your acne, bitch, go to the dermatologist. If you're insecure about your body, bitch, eat better and go to the gym. If you're insecure about the way you're dressed, bitch, look up Pinterest boards and try to find some way to style. There's literally bitches on TikTok that will, if you pay them, will curate a box of clothes that they thrifted based upon a Pinterest board you sent them and send you these clothes. Oh, that's like, kind of cute. Do the work, bitch. Do the fucking work. <laughs> I hooked up with a guy recently who was so cute, whatever. But I say the night, woke up with him in the morning. He took like an hour and a half to get ready. Not a drag queen. 
War. not a drag queen. War. And I was just like, oh, this is why he looks, he spends so much time. But anyways, yeah. Something that was a big self-confidence booster for me recently was like getting my fit together for the renaissance fair that i went to for for my anniversary just Mm. like getting all of those things together and like styling the outfit and like putting on the hat a certain way and just like looking at how i looked in like that corset and and my the jerkin as it's called okay (laughs) Uh, like like putting together that outfit and just like finding an excuse to dress up and just like pretend to be a character and have a really good time like because you're proud of it that was such like a just like a like a small like i didn't even realize it was a self-confidence boost until i was at the renaissance fair with my boyfriend and we like were just having such a good time i was like oh i I feel so good about myself i love that so dress up bitch dress up like get it put together a little costume or something you know maybe if you don't like partying have like a little something at your at your house have like a game night also find things that work for your specific bodily situation if you are you not everyone's a six foot two white male i'm a five foot eight mexican bitch i'm not gonna try to like replicate those things because that literally just does not work for me when i'm doing my makeup something that doesn't work that works for me may not work on other girls and vice versa literally just focus on you take your measurements see what kind of body type you have and go off that don't be trying to like compare yourself like i said comparison is a killer of joy also go to a tailor it's cheap yeah (laughs) tailors are not as expensive as you think no they're cheap 10 bucks like tailoring a pair of pants or like a shirt that you like like to fit you it can make a big difference yeah yeah that's something i need to i have a couple um pants that i have been wanting to like turn to shorts so i just want to like cut them myself and then take them to a tailor and just get those thank you for that reminder i need to do that too see it's it's summertime you you gotta like take last year's pants and turn them into shorts and then you make room for this year's pants when the winter comes back (laughs) this next one is from i got scared it's a story time (laughs) (laughs) i got scared and they write okay i'm not sure if this is worth sharing but i was on grinder the other day and saw this very 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 hot man early 30s beautiful chiseled abs nice pits important just looking at his pics made me want to get on my knees and look at him with pleading eyes and open my mouth gratefully while he spits down my throat and anyway you get the point he was hot we tapped each other i asked hey how's it going and the convo starts getting pretty tame we quickly get into exchanging pics and the into lists his list was not what i expected and had some stuff i wasn't sure what he meant among the vanilla stuff things like getting oral breeding facials his list included giving verbal physical and psychological abuse now is he my dad I, (laughs) i wasn't sure exactly what he meant so i started asking can i ask by what you mean by psychological abuse he said degrading you stalking but only if we click i like the fear i was yep i was trying to be polite i immediately knew we weren't a match but figured hey if he's down to not stalk me maybe we can just fuck once and never acknowledge each other again so i said wow that sounds intense he goes yeah it's intense it's only if we click so i inquired about other kinds of abuse he wanted to do i asked how serious he was with the physical abuse i was thinking it'd be stuff like a slap in the face while i'm getting throat fucked maybe choked out while i'm getting fucked but it was more than that he said i want to punch you in the stomach to leave you winded (laughs) again to try to stay polite i just said oh okay i see he then asked are we a match and i told him no i'm not really looking for something that extreme or intense he sent me a bunch of sad faces i hit him up because i wanted him to spit on me maybe and maybe pee on me while telling me i'm a dirty whore i was not expecting it to have to be the main character of the goblin cave anyway i don't need advice or anything i blocked the profile and moved on i just wanted to share okay i love them this story is wild i love them with all my heart i love that they brought up the goblin cave they know that that's near and dear to my heart (laughs) if you are unfamiliar with goblin cave um, oh bitch uh it is very explicit and i will one day write the goblin cave episode zero wherein they were in the hero writes a contract with the goblins to uh initiate the consensual non-consent of their relationship that is my goblin that is my goblin cave episode zero 
Damn. Would you let someone this stalk you? This is crazy. I'm Sexually. not going to lie. If you look back at this, there's a part in the middle where I was like, because I'm like, maybe, maybe, bitch, if you're hot enough, I'm that crazy enough too, where I'm like, yeah, I, I've been like kind of teasing with blocking this one guy who I've been seeing, but did I do a little bit of spell where I said, you know, I'm so glad that this person is um, obsessed with me and did some like sex magic and lit it on fire and stuff. Yes. Work. You know, yes. But the thing like is, he said, I can get down with some of this. If we click, if he's we saying, click. if we, bitch, you think you you're worthy enough to click with that. You want to get spit on. Maybe you're not ready for all this. He probably wouldn't have done that to you. You're crazy. But um, that can be kind of, like I said, I do shit for the plot. But I think it can be fun and kind of silly. The thing is, is like, I'm down for some of this stuff. Maybe not in the stomach, but I've been punched in like the chest in like a sexual oh, manner. Oh, they love doing that whenever you're like riding them and they go, and they like, yeah. yeah I can get oh. with that, you know, but like the the worry here is that like even if you don't want all of that, what if he then takes that extra step and starts stalking you anyway? That would be my biggest fear about the, all of this is like if we click on the rest of the stuff and then I decide to go through with it and I'm like, OK, I don't want the stalking. What if he does it anyway? That would that would be the scariest part for what me. What keeps me from having that fear is he's upfront about it. He said, if we click, I am into the feeling of having psych, which is psychotic, he needs help, but the feeling of having psychological abuse done. Yes. So it seems to be a consensual thing where it's like, you like that I'm doing this. I like that. I would I need like a contract. I need it in writing. Yeah, but I like, need it in writing. Bitch, that's for bad bitches. If you can't handle that, step the fuck aside. I would need <laughs> it in writing. But the thing is, like, so many people that are into the into like the BDSM community and like into kink communities and things like that, I at least if they're doing it correctly, they will be very upfront about it and would be down to like write a contract with you and like really lay out like the points of what it means to go through with all the stuff that they're into. I love so, that. She should have passed it my way. I would have been like, yeah, let's try it. I'm sh <laughs> well, if, if this writer is in Chicago, th this person might be here. Who knows? That's kind of crazy. And I'm kind of gagged that like reading this back, having not read this before we started, I'm kind of like, I could see me into that. I could totally get into some of this stuff. Oof. But if that's not for you, the punching, if you punch me, we are throwing hands. Yeah. No. Don't you ever hit me. No. No. Yeah. no. You're at crazy. Least, definitely not without talking about it beforehand. No. Like, don't fucking not. punch me. What? Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of a crazy fucking story. And I wish this was my story. But I, I love how, like, they really take they take us on a journey in this story because, like, from the top, you're like, oh, they're into it. Halfway through, they're like, oh, they might actually go through with it. And then, like, you you are, like, we are on this trip with them. This bitch is a little crazy for saying, I'm hoping that, like, we can just fuck and then, like, never talk to each other again. Because, like, you're a little crazy for knowing that he's crazy and still wanting it. And still wanting it. So you're also an enabler. We applaud And that. you also need help. <laughs> and I see you and I, I love you, bitch. And hit me up. We should be friends. We applaud that. Like, this, <laughs> this is like, this is the type of shenanigans that we love here. I really want to know how hot this guy is. Like, I know yeah. you blocked him, but like, just send like a torso pic. Like, I, like don't share like the I full. I want to smell like, him. We just want to see. I want to see the pits. I want to smell him. Fuck my king. Right. And non non Latino people love being called puppy. So he's probably white. I would call him puppy. Maybe probably. Fuck, have, that's kind of hot. I have an old coworker who I still see sometimes, and he's white, and he always calls me puppy, and I'm always like, wait, why are you doing that? Vice versa, <laughs> absolutely not. Don't call me puppy. It's I'll very you, odd. Puppy. It's very odd. I'm like, wait. Yeah. <laughs> but he's like so nice about it that I'm like, oh, fine, I let it slip. But whatever. No. My, I remember my ex uh, on one of our first dates, he called me papa. And I was like, I don't know what Latino you fucked. I let him call you that. And I told him just like that. And I was like, but you are not allowed to call me that. My mom calls uh, me that and she's dead. You're not allowed to call me that. Not doing it. And he not was gagged. Oh, that's hot. Maybe Fuck. you could like, uh, maybe if you want to like unblock him. 
if you set your guidelines and just let him come to you and see like maybe you can like meet him halfway about it yeah. it's only if you click but i still think there's a chance that you could probably hook up or if you like really don't want this man in your house or know where you live like set up a time go to, to his cruise house or go to his place i was just gonna say like find a time to like cruise somewhere go to like the bird sanctuary go to your gym or something i don't know Do people set up cruises sometimes i've, I've, I've heard never people set up, set up a cruise so t- tell me t- are, you, are you a cruising girl oh my god am i a cruising girl i love cruising with all my heart lord Let's talk about like, it. help me i love cruising so much i've never set it up though i thought that's the whole point of it it's just like whoever's there in the moment well yes that that is like the biggest part of it but there is the option to set up that environment with somebody yeah you know it's not like as a i would say like authentic as like the cruising that that you're Mm. talking about but it definitely is because some people do get that that feeling off about like being especially people who like public yeah yeah so you you could definitely set that up i i don't even know if you would then call it cruising but you're definitely public like if you if you want to just pan plan public play with him that way he really can't like he can't hurt you that much if you're he in public, beat the shit out of you in public <laughs> exactly <girl. What? laughs> exactly he really he can't like beat the beat the mess out of you in the in the sauna yeah, yeah try that first be like meet me at the gym and then we'll see what's up but be careful bitch and make sure you know what he's about and don't give any fucking room for doubt if you're not into getting punched in the gut and being stalked don't even entertain it yeah but, but they were they're into other stuff they said that they, he can pee on them he could he could choke them out while they're getting throat oh, that's vanilla like there there are options i think here's what you do you unblock him you let you lay down your rules and let him yeah. meet you and if he's mm-hmm. not into it then boom you guys just don't do anything what did pussy has bishop block him no i don't know i could i could see like in the moment just being say like, no i'm not into it and then yes but i could see in the moment being like oh my god i have to block this person and then like just doing it like as like as a reaction um, yeah this this comment i need to read it says cruising 101 schedule someone you want to hook up with just in case there aren't interesting people there <gasps> oh that's really good i always just take my l's if there's nobody there that i'm into um but i never thought of that how does cruising usually go for you so cruising for me is very oof my most recent one was on the train we met at the addison red line stop and he was like ta- kind of flirting with me and he was just like i was kind of paying a dust and he's like i'm flirting with you just so you know and i was like oh, oh being that forward that's how oh, bitch i'm forward so i was like oh okay what's up so we sat in the same car together my leg on him his arm around me and then started making out pulled his dick out i didn't suck it because i'm not a monster we're on the red line but i've seen you know, worse on the red line <laughs> yeah we definitely have seen worse but i truly like the like spot in 80 i love the flirty i love the build up the eyes up and down i love the like my first cruising experience was at ffc over in lakeview because i used to live by there and this guy was like fully erect and like had his shadow where you can see it in the showers because they're right next to each other and then like tapped his foot under and i tapped back and he just put it under and then like stuff 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 so i really am into the cruising vibe i really love it but ffc stands for fun for cruising okay yeah miss miss chicago luke or whatever his fucking name is is always there and i'm like girl you're wild then but um yeah cruising is very like it has to be subtle because there's guys who are very intense with cruising like they'll be from the showers to the steam room back and forth oh my god when it turns me off it's wild i'm I'm always like girl it's doing the most you're desperate you're ugly get out i just find it so interesting because i the only time i cruised was a little bit in college and i haven't done it ever since since then Mm. but i just love hearing people's stories about it I love it. In college, I had like this whole little uh, video project where I talked to uh, specifically what the queer elders that we had. You know, I would talk to like older queer people and like get their stories about cruising. Just yeah, that's the all years. they had. It's great. Like in hearing their stories about it is so like okay. So in Philadelphia, because this was when I was living in Philly. In Philly, there is a park. They called it the Carousel. Mm. and so the way that people would cruise there it's like so there's a park and then there's a a one-way street Mm -hmm. uh all around the park 
So, so they people, just like loop around and that's yeah, why it's called the carousel. Yeah, it it's called the carousel. So people in their cars would go around. I love that. And then if, if you wanted it, you know, you would go up to their car, blah, 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 blah. They would see you, you would see them and that's how it would go. So a lot of people would go to the right. carousel or they would go to the train tracks. It's now, it's it's a park now, but it's where the freight trains were. Oh. Um, and it's called, oh my God. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Lupita Nyong'o. No, 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 no. <laughs> Shaka Khan, what's her, <laughs> what's her name? Uh, uh, the Wizard of Oz lady, what's her name? Oh, Audrey Hepburn. That is not her. Is it her? <laughs> that is not her. Oops. Take my gay card. <laughs> no, not Audrey Hepburn. Who's Liza Minnelli's mom? Not Dorothy. Yeah, Liza Minnelli's mom. Um, Judy Garland. Judy, Judy Garland. Garland. Thank you, Neo. Judy Garland Park in Philadelphia is what it was called, or that's what the that's what the gays would call it. It was where the freight trains were, and that was like a really big cruising spot in the trees amongst the freight train. Hell yeah. I love that. Best dick of your life, I bet, was in those fucking Pro- the tracks. way The way that these men were telling it, I was, oh my God. I would be in those interviews face red. Yes, I used to live in Vegas, and we, over in Vegas, like especially from California to Vegas, that whole little strip through the like Mojave Desert, it's a lot of like trucks. So I was what what was called a lot lizard, which is when you go from like truck to truck to truck and hook up with a bunch of guys. And bitch, I was lot lizarding my life down because in the back of the trucks, they have the beds and shit. Word. So bitch, at the back of like a love gas station, I was getting all the love, baby. This is not the first time I've heard this. I have heard the word lot lizard before. You just yeah. reminded me of it. But I, yeah, I, apparently the truckers... They be fucking. They down. love it. They love the dolls. <laughs> Work. That being said, I should. I should bring that project back. I should talk to some older gay people. In that Chicago. sounds really cool. I would love to visit that. If you have any links to anything still out. Oh, I don't even. I don't even know where it is. I probably. It's probably on a hard drive somewhere. If I find Especially it, in Philly. Oh, good dick is in Philly. Yeah, this was like years ago. I had done this maybe 2017. I probably lost all the shit for it, but. If you want to do it in Chicago, we we can we, we can talk to the girls. I'm sure people have yeah, tons of stories. I guess you can set up cruising now. I guess right. I guess Just you can learn set that. Up. Yeah. <laughs> um, this next one is my turn, and it's called "Eager to Try." Um, they say I want to try a glory hole. I've never sucked dick through one, and I want to try it, but I'm not really a cruising kind of guy. Oh my God, more cruising. This. Hi. <laughs> speaking of cruising, and I f- and I would feel awkward if I ran into someone I knew at Steamworks or something like that. So I'm too shy to go to bathhouses or anything, and my apartment doesn't have a good setup for setting up a homemade glory hole like with a sheet or something i don't have a buzzer to let people in so i'd have to walk downstairs and open the door for them and that kind of defeats the purpose right um they asked do you have an idea for how to i can check this off my sex bucket list without having to risk running into people i know at a bathhouse or video shop there's always the option to put like a door stop to keep those doors open that's what i was gonna say right go ahead but I, my thing is, I get not wanting to like run into people you know at a bathhouse or a video shop. But I think at that point, you're both under like the social, uh, like the social contract of you're both being in these places and kind right, of right. Like, it's like you can't make fun of me for shopping at Goodwill if you're here too shopping too, bitch, and you see me. What? Yeah. So I, I I think if if you do encounter someone you know at the video shop, you know like that's the social contract because you know you're both there and like you would keep that knowledge there and not you know run and tell it on the mountain right also even if they did tell it on the mountain no one gives a fuck like you guys are both there you're both shopping at the goodwill no one cares you guys are both at the goodwill yeah sucking dick in a glory hole is fun real quick i want to read this uh comment (laughs) there was and it may still exist a dating website for lot lizards called (gasps) trucker suckers no Shout out to the trucker suckers. Shout out out to the trucker suckers. This was in the days where Craigslist Craigslist was still alive. So it was M seeking M or M seeking F or M seeking T. Oh, bitch, get into the M seeking T. Mm. Um, So trucker suckers, I am gagged. I've never heard of that. I I love that. That's wild. Um, That being said, I think your best bet if you don't. Cause I'm not going to, we're not like going to force you to go to a bath house or the video shop. Like I think your best bet would be to like set up a door stopper or like wear a mask or something. And like, you know, or even if you have to tell them like, I'm going to let you in, but I'm going to be in a mask. Don't look at me. Like I'm going to go upstairs. I'll let you know, here's where it is. Now that you're inside, come up 
at your leisure, right? Yeah, I don't think that defeats the purpose of it. Like, I think, again, like you said, with the mask, that's a great idea. And it's small things like this. And I'm like, bitch, you didn't think of this. Like, put a door stopper. Get you a pup mask. Get you a pup mask. And just, like, just put, a, put a full sheet over yourself like a ghost. <laughs> yeah, be like, whoo. Just don't let it be white. Be like the ghost is gonna let you in, and then right. you're gonna go to the third floor, and it's gonna be the fourth door on your left. You know, or get somebody supper. that likes to watch people like that's voyeuristic. Have them bring them in, and yes. then you like an escort to hell. Yes. Oh my god. Wait, that's actually. I think that's, that's probably hot. that. Yes, because that's hot. If if you're into that or up for it, get a friend who can like guide them up and then watch. Also, what do you mean you're shy, bitch? You cannot go to a glory hole and be shy. Like, those two things cannot well, coexist. I think I you, feel you like. could be shy because no one's seeing your face. But it's it's <laughs> like, it's in the sense that, like, you're doing it. Like, yeah. you're not, you're not if you say that, if, if you're at a glory hole, like, a little part of me doesn't think you're shy. Like, you may say you're shy. Bitch, you it's go to like, glory oh, holes and no. bath houses. Like, right, like, you're playing it. coy. Like, don't like, be coy. Like, sitting at the edge chest. of the bed with the hookup. Like, oh, no. Like, I don't, I don't never do this done often. This. Yeah, like, I don't like, do this. <laughs> it's like, you do <laughs> Two because seconds you just later, this guy yeah. over. Yeah. Right. It's like, stop. Who are you kidding? Like, I like my idea. Set up a door stopper. Yeah, do a door. Honestly, I like your idea of getting a friend. That's hot. That one is I, hot. I think that's hot. Get a friend. Yeah, hey, Issa, let Issa be the friend. Yeah, I'll do it, and I won't judge you. I promise you. Yeah, like um, like what do they call them? Ushers at like a theater. Yeah, like right here, right here to the glory hole, sir. Here to the glory yeah, hole. Yeah, I'll, I'll make sure that his dick don't stink when he comes to you because you deserve better. Yes, I need yeah. an inspection before you go in. No cheese. Work. But yeah, <laughs> I think if if you're shy and you want to do a glory hole, it kind of is like the perfect thing. Yeah, no one has to see you. Right? No one has to see you giving sloppy toppy, girl. Because, like, here's the thing. Would this you run perfect. into someone at the video shop if no one's seeing your face? Right. Like, you don't know what their dick looks like. How could be anybody? Yeah. I do commend them, though, for knowing that they do want to do this. It's a matter of just taking that step of that it's first a leap step of faith. of faith. Yep. And just doing it. Yeah. It's definitely, like... It like especially because this is something you want to try you have to it, it's going to be a little uncomfortable it's about stepping in that uncomfort and like enjoying that like that that excitement that nervousness yeah. is also excitement that first time i went to steamworks was with my drag sister Work. well she was my sister at the time but me and luna la catrina we went together and we had we did not see each other naked and we did not hook up we got a locker went together. we went together we got a locker we got a room and we said we're gonna meet together here at 7 a.m and we're just gonna go do our own thing just keep an eye on the clock and you know have fun you're not the first person who I've heard do this. I, yeah. I I have a couple other friends who have like, yeah, my first time was with someone else. We just showed up. We we like obviously we didn't do anything together. We just went like as support. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So that's an option do too. Do that. I'll go with you. You just have to pay our way. Yeah. Or if you got like expendable income and you want to just like take a trip, take yourself on a little solo trip and go to a bathhouse in another city. <gasps> that's true go somewhere else what yeah. go that's somewhere, a great go advice. somewhere where you have zero risk of running into someone you know right well, i don't have zero. that problem anymore <laughs> because i'm not from here so i don't run into people i know yeah i forgot about that that's great advice do you i don't know let me know if you've experienced this so since not being from here do you find that sometimes you see people who look like people from home? That happened literally today. I walked by somebody at the gym that looked like somebody I went to high school with. And I was like, what the fuck? I almost hit them up. Like, I thought I saw you today. It but, happens uh, all the time to me. I see people that look like people I know on the East Coast. And I'm like, oh, my God. That just feeds into my theory that everybody's like an NPC. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. That Sometimes it does real. feel that way. Like my brain is recycling these people and like just put it like, here's this template. Boom. NPC. Template. Man. Template boots. Yeah. Template down. Very Truman Show. This comment says Truman Show syndrome. Oh my God, I might have it. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. But yeah, I'm glad that I don't have that problem where I like, I run into people that I've had like previous pre high, like high school era me like rapport with. Yeah. This is from Doll from the Block. It's a confession. And they say, okay. okay. So, a few years ago, I dated a guy who was in the closet and still is till this day. Well, he recently got married to some cis woman. Cowboy emoji. Anyway, he has a brother who looks just like him. 
And his brother, we'll call him John, started hitting <gasps> on me recently from out of nowhere. And my goof ass asked him, don't you have an older brother who looks just like you? We'll call him Alex, AKA my ex. John says, yes, I do. How do you know him? I ignore the question and said something else. Well, my ex and I dated before I transitioned. And so his brother only knows me as a doll. From what I know, it's against their religion to associate with any of this. The cowboy emoji is taking me out. Cowboy emoji. There are cowboy emojis all over this question. Right. And I may have outed one by accident, but I didn't say it exactly. So Alex is married now. And well, I ended up blocking him because I'm not causing no more problems. P.S. I looked at my ex and he does not share one single thing about his wife. And his wife shares all their pictures all over Facebook. Sad AF. Anyway, bye, Jakey. Heart oh, emotion. that's crazy. It's all from the block. Fucking the I brothers. I hope that you fucked his brother. I am, Um, this is part of my toxic things I do on purpose video where I fucked my ex's brother and I did it because he cheated on me. And bitch, in the middle of hooking up, I told his brother, like I took his dick out of my mouth. I was like, you're bigger. And I picked him up from their fucking house. So um, I'm petty and I commend you for fucking hooking up with his brother because as you motherfucking should. Reclaiming um, my time. Okay. Reclaiming my time. Very that. That's crazy. I hope you fucked his brother. But you already yeah. fucked the original brother to begin with. So you know what that dick's like. Yeah. And the other one's married now. Just fuck the other brother. Yeah. Yeah. Or spill everything. Oh, spill everything. Send it to her and then block her immediately. Like I, delete. I'm everything. coming to you as the woman. I'm coming to you as the woman from woman to woman. Your man is like really into the dolls and like he's not who he says he says he is. And I need you to just keep your like walls up with him because you never know who you're laying in bed with. Well, we don't and even then, know. We don't even know if he's into the dolls because they said that. What's his transition. Name? pre-transition the brother that they're currently talking to is into the dolls oh i see i see i see so one of them got the pre-transition and then the the current one is into the dolls why didn't you stay with him you ain't fucked the new body you fucked nicole body yeah honestly damn that would have been so cunty if she stayed with this brother and then shows up to the family event like hi like oh. what's up I Bitch, want to know what? what they mean by they uh, they may have outed one by accident. I want to know more about that story. Give us an update. Send it's us that story. That she told him how they kind of know each other, oh, which isn't think. allowed for them to be like gay. Gotcha. Yeah, because it's, it's against their religion to associate with any of this. Yeah. Which so it's giving, sounds like yeah. it could be most religions, to be fair. Yeah. I want pictures, and that's kind of embarrassing that Alex shares doesn't share anything but his wife shares everything he yeah. misses that pussy he might he might that pussy now transition go, yeah go go fuck the current brother and come back to us send us an she update blocked him no whoa oh i thought they meant that they blocked <clears throat> alex i blocked my ex oh wait i think wait alex wait what is, is it, i'm also alex, drunk alex is married now and well i ended up blocking him because i'm not causing any more problems Wait, so they're kind of vague. We don't know if they blocked Alex yeah, or John. Who did you block? If you blocked Alex, continue with John. Continue with John and look cunty and show up to that family barbecue and be like, hi. That's the thing. Hi. And then let them battle it out. That's their problem. Oh my God, you have to do it. Please, I'm begging you. If you do anything in this life, please do that. Just walk up to him and the wife and be like, don't, I, don't we know each other? Don't we know each other? <laughs> You're like, oh my God, he looks so familiar. Oh my God, you're Alex. That's like crazy. Do you remember yeah. me? Yeah. <gasps> I, I looked a little different back then. You know, oh, like. That's I, cunty. You have an opportunity in your lap to be cunt. Yeah, this is your moment. Take it. This is your moment. This is your moment. Take have it. it. Have it. Have it. What? Drama. This That's is over here. Fierce. I want an update. I want an update. Even if you don't do anything currently, which which you totally should fuck the other brother, let us know about the whole outing accident. We're, I'm curious about that. And fuck the other brother and tell us which one was better. Ooh, very that. Yes. Mm. Yes. Let us know that. Ooh. That was I a good one. That. Like, I'm glad we did that one. That was a good one to end on. That one was great. Okay. So now, customarily, this is our time to take a very quick break. I'm going to end the stream. And oh. we will do our second segment, Advice to the Stars, where we give advice to public figures, celebrities, politicians, talk about current events, 
and give advice to people who didn't ask for it but damn well need it okay period and we are back from our break wasn't such a lovely break it was so good it was good i feel refreshed had some water went to the bathroom real quick it was good we are back with our second segment advice of the stars where we give advice to public figures um people in culture things like that people that don't necessarily ask for it but damn well need advice uh, I got a couple things to talk about today. Some of them are a little heavy. Some of them are a little light. I'm going to start with the good news. K-pop group New Jeans. Have you heard of them, Issa? I love New Jeans. Great. I My advice is primarily to their marketing team. I think they're doing a decent job, but I like that they're like, you know, they got TikTok hits. They've got easy listening music. It's very easy to pick up. It gets stuck in your head. They have that lovely, like that lovely Chicago house uh, okay. sample in in ETA. Um, they sampled the Powerpuff Girls in. Uh, I love that, that song. Is that song? Uh, so like, I think they're doing a really good job. But their marketing team, I need, I need them to get to these girls to like Blackpink status. Like, I need these girls to blow the fuck. They're definitely capable up. of it they like i think they're having a really good start ahead of them like this what they've done up to now is great but i really need their marketing team to like capitalize on it to catapult these girls they were at Lollapalooza last weekend they were i think the first k-pop group at lala according to wow. one of their lead singers said on stage work so like i i just y'all to like, keep it the fuck up and right if you and keep it going yeah exactly like don't let this fizzle out like um like a couple other groups because some groups or or you know not even just k-pop groups some normani there oh. are some people where like they had a really good start and then shit fizzles so like my yeah. like the advice here is really keep it going like y'all have a great start but it's up to you to like keep it moving like you got your 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 head is on the poles baby like keep it up yeah i mean that's kind of out of the control of the girls hands right i know and that's, that's kind what of scares me people. that is what scares me it is like up to the marketing team the pr team it's about like booking these girls for the right things getting yeah. them on the right like avenues and things like that i think Lollapalooza was a really really good step for them yeah like getting them a festival this early was fantastic but i i think they got a good head on their shoulders i just hope their team is there to back them up and they don't end up like other groups that are just like in limbo period yeah what's your favorite new jeans song um it's the one with the powerpuff girls logo on it i'm pretty sure that one is asip maybe i don't know i i think the full like uh, uh cool with e you super shy i think it's cool with you that i'm talking about Cool with you gosh yeah because is the full ep is that the powerpuff girls background yeah uh get up yes yeah, yeah cool with you is just my shit right now obviously super shy is like incredible but like super shy is great i love yeah. it cool with you and ditto are like my shit super shy is what that um what the glory hole person needs to listen to like right super <laughs> shy. I'm super shy. okay that's what like behind behind the the curtain as they have their friend let this person in just be like i'm super shy, <laughs> I'm super shy. <laughs> now wait a minute like this is your time yeah yeah they're that um, girl get it together yeah so if you're not listening to new jeans their on. album was like um or ep was like projected to be right behind uh barbie's uh, right on the billboard hot 100 i think they were projected to be number one and then barbie like kept being crazy and now barbie's taking number one uh, i mean listen watch me dance okay dance, dance the, the night, night away. away exactly yeah um Tip it up girls okay. My thing is, um, to all the celebrities getting shit thrown at them, y'all need to follow oh my God. Adele's lead, Honey Balenciaga's, and Cardi B's and not be scared to square the fuck up with these motherfuckers in the crowd. Yeah. Like, whenever somebody threw something at Beyonce, Honey Balenciaga was around her Vogue and scooped that shit up and threw that shit back. I was oh. like, yeah, that's how you do it. Adele, she was talking about, don't look at the back of my wig, you motherfucker. I'm sure you get that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, if you look at the back of the wig you're transphobic right oh and wait then, nobody will be looking at it because this is the podcast only version we're good oh, we're safe okay period safe. so I, i'll get close and talk really nice um so <laughs> adele was having her residency in vegas and she was talking about it and she was like i swear to god if any of you motherfuckers she said this if any of you motherfuckers throw anything on stage i'll fucking kill you bitch threaten them cardi yeah. b had eyes thrown on her recently you know what she did she looked at that bitch her eyes Threw locked like that bitch in mic. squid games and she grabbed that mic and fucking chucked it at her 
with yeah. the strength and accuracy of I saw the video of somebody's tia throwing the chunkla like that shit hurt yeah, square bitch. where it was supposed to square the fuck up with these motherfuckers Period. alternatively be like gaga and just have an invisible force field in front of you at all times also that so that nothing can hit you or be far enough away from them to where nothing can reach that. yeah i want to talk a little bit about um lizzo period go ahead and not necessarily so much on the actual thing like like i think it's important to acknowledge that the accus the accusations put against her like some of them are very bad and some of them I think, if they're true they are presumption. bad yeah some of them are definitely very bad and some of them are i think blown out of proportion a bit especially the one about uh her being fat phobic to her own dancers and i saw someone's take on this that was a professional dancer and was also fat and they were talking about the in industry knowledge about it. I wish I had their at so I can direct people to go see it. If I find it, I'll put it in the show notes. It was Nicki Minaj. Just say it. No, it was not Nicki Minaj. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put it in the show notes. I'll find it and I'll, I'll put it in the show notes. There, they had a really a lot of really good takes. But my favorite thing that they said um, that I'm also going to parrot here is that, and this is something I thought about when it first happened. Actually, is a lot of people were using this as a chance to just fully unveil their own fat phobia, their own right. misogynoir. Right, y'all were waiting for her to fuck up to be waiting up on for it. her for because the amount of people that were like, "Oh, great, I never liked her." It's like, well, she was good up until this point. Why didn't you like her, bitch? Yeah, so it's like you are all holding Lizzo to a different standard than other artists, and now that like this knowledge has come up, this is a lot of people's chance to be like. Oh, good. I never liked that fat bitch. Blah 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 blah. blah. Right. And, then, and then, like, this is your misogynoir fo- showing up. Is your fat phobia coming out? So many people are just throwing away their veil and just letting it all up. And to them, my advice: is to shut the fuck up. Shut, shut the up. fuck up and re- try to really reflect on why it is that you why don't do you feel like that a way? certain person. Whenever I see, there are no th- worse thoughts in my head than when I'm at the airport. And the way that I have to do a lot of self-reflecting on why the fuck it is that I feel those certain ways about certain people, you have to think about it. Think about yeah. it. Sit on it. Don't yeah. tweet it. Think about it, analyze. bitch. Analyze. Analyze. Yeah. Try to uh, decolonize your brain. Figure out why you are holding this fat black woman to a different standard than any other artist. And why you're so quick to jump on thing. her. So quick to immediately, like like we said, like these accusations, if, if true, they're true, they're bad. They're bad. And like at that point, you know, we deal with them as they come. But for people to fully just do this 180 on her and and be like oh i never liked her and stuff like that that you're just holding her to such a different standard that it's, it's just completely not fair yeah that being said the two women that are a part of the case and did that tmz interview yeah my advice to y'all is to seek different legal counsel and to shut the fuck up because if you're in litigations and trying to promote your case question mark question mark and you decide to do a tmz interview right for the general opinion which is like so much of a case right is getting general opinion a general opinion on your side yeah doing a tmz interview like this is not a good look nor is it when you say when they ask you did she do something directly and you say it was kind of just like a looming feeling we all had it's kind of like girl shut the fuck up stop talking speaks in facts yeah when you're under oath you speak in facts not in feelings we don't we don't, we don't go off feelings and things and you know so I, my advice to them is to seek like if you're really serious about this case and and you have these allegations like get different legal counsel because the tmz interview took so much credibility out of the case. i know like, that's crazy whoever they find next is gonna have a uphill battle to, yeah. to, to finish out this case well they um, really need that advice which that being said like like i said this is all not to like uh defend her necessarily but like yeah if these accusations are true like yeah that's some pretty serious stuff yeah but it is to call on to question the reason why people are so quick to jump on a Two heavier things can be true woman. at the same time she can yeah. both have done these things and the end be wrong for them while also calling out everyone else for not holding her to that same standard yeah to a to a different standard i mean right um well my next one is you guys need to start believing bitches for who they say they are maya angelou said that first but the reason why i bring this up is because people going crazy on ariana grande for 
breaking up this marriage allegedly when she has a song called break up Break-up with your boyfriend with your because boyfriend. i'm bored oh my this, and people are so surprised this bitch so is, surprised. A, is she a cancer right she's a toxic ass cancer so. bitch you guys need to start believing people for even who more they so are. than that she's from florida she's from boca raton specifically is she really yes <laughs> which automatically bitch. makes her like like that if you didn't know now She's a bad person. <laughs> garbage. Garbage. You guys need Boca to start Raton. believing bitches for who they are when they say they are that. Because yeah. it's not surprising. Look at that song. Like, girl, shut up. Like, they, like she let girl, y'all know up front. And now when, she, when someone broke up. With their girlfriend because they're girlfriend, bored. Because they're bored. You know, like, come on now. Wait, is it break up with your boyfriend or break up with your girlfriend? Break up with your girlfriend. I oh, said it for, wrong. For a second, I thought it was boyfriend. I was like, oh my god. No, it's because I said boyfriend. about lesbians? Because I'm gay. It's a, okay. I said it because I'm gay. Because I'm bored. <laughs> but yeah. I was, about, I was about to be like, oh my god. My so Ariana Grande, Ariana Grande, ignore <laughs> the haters. You've said who you are from the get. And um, I'm sorry to that woman for, um, you know, for being a casualty in our toxic behaviors. But, you know, all's fair in love and war. And if we want something, we're going to get it. Sorry. I admittedly have not been following this story that much. I'm not really tuned in to the Ariana Grande of it all. That being said, like you raise a perfect point. She has said this. So for people to be surprised, especially her stands to be surprised when you're probably bopping that song on the daily. Right. Eh. You think she's just saying that for fun? No, but she said that with her chest. Exactly. <laughs> so, she decided to take the worst advice to do with life's predicaments. Yeah, <laughs> Ariana so Grande. Fuck these she's, people. They're yeah. all weird. Um, you're not having girl dinner. You have an eating disorder. Okay. I just recently found out what girl dinner was. <laughs> And I only found out because I saw a video that said gay dinner and it was a bottle of rush on a plate. Stop. <laughs> That's so very niche. But you I don't... saw that and yeah. then I was like, what the fuck is girl dinner? I just found out about this. You don't. You're not having girl dinner. You have an eating disorder. Let's Pokemon get dinner. into it. <laughs> we need Pokemon dinner. We need an app to get the girls yeah, good, you need good an Pokemon incentive dinner. To eat your regularly balanced meal, bitch. What? Yeah. Um, also, aliens. Um, I don't give a fuck about aliens. I need y'all bitches to learn about Pro- Project Blue Beam and be more wary about the government pretending an alien invasion is going to happen to in order to establish a new world order. Um, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> My biggest thing about aliens is like, I don't think they're here. I do, but the thing is, I don't care. Like, I just don't think they have anything really to do with us. I don't think they like us. Yeah, I if, think if we're relative seen to us, them. They, yeah, they're probably like these unevolved life forms spend all their time killing each other. We have nothing to do here. But have you heard they about Project have, Blue Beam? I have not. Enlighten me. Oh my god, sorry. My so eyes Project hurt. Blue Beam is this like conspiracy theory that the government is preparing us to think that like otherworldly beings exist, and th- it's it's supposed to be in conjunction with this um, advanced technology that we have that we've seen before, where it's like drones and lasers and lights and smoke and mirrors to make it look like a projection in the sky is real. Oh, and so you- the the whole thing is is like lubing us up to that technology and that um, so that they can pretend an alien inv- invasion is happening globally in order to get the humanity and human race to unify under an entire new world order government sort of thing to be submissive towards our leaders. Have you ever seen or read Watchmen? No, I haven't. I've seen the movie when I was young, but I haven't not like kept up with it. This is the plot to Watchmen. Is it? Bitch, it they're is. not original then. Like, <laughs> this is bitch, the plot fuck to Watchmen. the government. If aliens are here, I don't care. I'm more concerned with the government trying to trick us that there are aliens here in order to establish this new government because fuck you. This is my chance to, to comic nerd out of it. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to take it. Me, I'm going to take it. So Watchmen, if you haven't read it, which I think it's a fantastic read. Alan Moore's I heard it's writer. great. <laughs> You can watch it on HBO Max. They have a video version of the comic book, which is more accurate than the film. Don't watch the movie. Yeah. Because the movie is, it took a lot of liberties. Alan Moore doesn't like the movie. That being said, after you read or watch like the OG version, watch HBO Max's original Mm. series. Because that series builds on those themes in a really interesting way. And 
talks a lot about race and the police state and things like that. Love that. Super good. <laughs> that being said, in Watchmen, there is a man who is, you know, he's Ozymandias. He claims to be like the smartest person in the world. That's like his like superpower or whatever. He has this plan. So he makes a giant octopus alien thing and implants it with a bunch of psychic bombs so that he deploys it on a city, killing everyone in like a, I want to say a 10 mile radius Whoa. and uses that in like almost like a 9-11 kind of way to unite the entire world against an alien invasion to get them to unify and to like stop wars and things project like that. Lumen. so it, it is that exact it is that ex- that exact notion is the project of watchmen and then not the the, the plot to watchmen and then the the hbo series builds on that in a super interesting way i will say conspiracy theories are a slippery slope and they are a right an easy way to fall into a right-wing pipeline that's, that's the part that scared me when you said conspiracy theory i was like oh, oh so no. be careful yeah. with believing all this stuff because it is an easy way for you to fall into the right wing. Um, but you, you can deal with them in theoreticals and like just like knowing them, at, like talking about them in a theoretical sense and not using it as like in that slippery slope, like not saying no. that that is fact, but just uh, using it as a way to ensure that you have like a healthy... Um, healthy amount of uh, speculation and skepticism Yeah, towards, towards the government. the powers that be, yeah. Yeah, period. Um, do you have anything else or are we more on the last one? Okay, so the last one, it's been in the news a bit. I'm sure you've all seen it. The O'Shea Sibley case, a professional dancer, a black queer man was voguing in a parking lot or it was, it was a, a gas, gas station, station, gas, in gas station, gas station in Brooklyn and offended a man's faith, allegedly. And the 17 year old, this child fucking garbage stabbed him. Uh, they had an altercation beforehand, and then he ended up stabbing him, and this this man died in his friend's arms on the way to the hospital. It's just such a tragic case. That's in fucking sane. And the advice I have, and what I want to talk about today, isn't so much toward anyone, any star, or any you know, any powers that be. It's it's to the public, and specifically, I want to talk to to queer people first. Yeah, this is a time for us to band together. This is a time for us to, as we should always be standing up to homophobia in our everyday lives. And to those of us, especially being allies to our trans family, always important. If you consider yourself an ally, if you're not queer and you're listening, you consider yourself an ally. This is what allyship looks like is, is standing in that place of discomfort and make ensuring safety for us stepping in when you see things that are wrong yeah this was a tragedy that that should have been avoided and that happens far too often to people of us in this community they want us to be so scared of them we have to stand up to homophobia in our everyday lives no matter what that looks like in our everyday lives like whenever you're at queen and you go upstairs and see angelica grace getting yelled at and called a man by bitches outside you stand up to that fucking man and you beat the fuck out of him bitch what yeah Yeah. the like allyship is not comfortable it's not comfortable and being a queer person is difficult and i understand like choosing your battles and things like that but there are some times where like you just have to do what is right that's a worthy battle though there are worthy battles exactly like i i can understand like if someone calls you a faggot on the subway and you don't you just don't have the energy for it that day that's one thing right but bitch if you have the energy that day or if you see someone being attacked on the subway or someone's being verbally assaulted you know do what you can because this shit happens far too often and if if people could come together and scare off the attackers or or just intervene in some way tragedies like this can be avoided that was actually one of my notes that i kind of didn't actually share was stop pretending drag queens are the real problem when your toxic uncle exists that part do the fucking work in your inner circle yeah. to if break something offends those... your faith let's talk about the people in your faith offending your right faith. you're 17 you didn't stumble across the person who did this thing to o'shea um you didn't stumble across this on your own you were taught this so it's like those are people that's your cousin those people are your uncles those people are your brothers your your uh, whatever like those people exist in your life and person whoever's listening to this you know that they exist in your family do the yeah. work 
to break that stigma down within your own walls because it's within those walls that you can have the biggest impact. Yeah, we don't. you don't got to change the world. You just got to change your world. And that means standing up to people that you Period. know, standing up to those in your circle. If you have a friend and she's dating some homophobic dude, it's time to have a conversation with her. Oh, it's bitch, I can go on for him. days and days about that topic. <laughs> yeah, like, like even if, if you're like thinking like, how, how can I as one person change this? You got to start talking to the people in your life that are homophobic or, or the people in your family, the people in your faith, things like that. And the thing is that the person, if this is you that's planning to embark on this journey, you have to know this is always uncomfortable. Always. Setting boundaries and confrontation is always uncomfortable, but it is through that discomfort that we can finally stumble upon and come to a logical conclusion that not only like enlightens this person that you're engaging with, but will eventually protect somebody like O'Shea. Yeah. Yeah. This is one of those things. It, it, it's it's hard, but it's also bigger than us. Yeah. It's about us as a people. Yeah. You know, we've had a lot of shit thrown at us and we have still found a way to make a culture, to make community, to stand up for each other. And we just can't let that stop. We got to keep doing that. Yeah. All the time. And you know that that 17 year old that was was just projecting something that he was taught and like it's like so there, hard there's to hear. so much at play here it is so yeah. hard it's such a tragic tragic and this something similar to this i saw um a story out of new york the a group of teenagers three young women mm -hmm. were attacking an asian family on the subway and uh, a reporter was on the train and started recording it um and then the girl started attacking him too but and, and one guy got in front of the family and you know put himself in that harm's way and like like these are teenage girls luckily they didn't stab him but like they, they did start to fight him but for the most part early on in that video so many people were just sitting there staring, watching it happen staring i've had this incident happen to me on the red line at roosevelt this girl this guy that's my problem y'all bitches need to stop recording y'all bitches need to stop recording and get the fuck up and fight because i was on the red line at roosevelt a few weeks ago and this guy was in this girl's face like rapping at her just being like really cringy and disgusting and i and nobody was doing anything and he was just like what the fuck like you're gonna fucking look at me and i got up out of drag like me on the train going home and i was like bro like she doesn't fucking want to talk to you no everybody was watching her him do this to her her in a corner kind of like by the door in between the glass and the door where it opens and not doing anything and he just started going and then he started going off on me calling me a f slur and like going all crazy on me can i can take here. that we can say faggot here calling me a faggot bitch ass i can take that because a i know how to fight and b i'm not scared of you bitch but like so when he was doing all that to me i opened up like my arm and let her go sit where I was sitting and then dealt with him. And he was like, bitch, he had a bottle in his hand. He was threatening to fucking like break the shit on me. And it, after all this happened, he kind of de-escalated. He was trying to like roast me and say like my breast stink, whatever, whatever, bitch. I don't give a fuck. As well, long as you breath leave, can stink as much as it can, as long as you're away from that fucking woman. As long as you're away from her, I don't give a fuck. And so- I don't give a fuck if I smell like French onion soup. Boots. Shiitake boots, mushrooms. Okay. You know, fucking the other side of someone's now. boot. I don't give a shit as long as that woman is safe. And so eventually he let up, he left, and I sat with her and she was like, I've lived in Chicago for so many years and nobody has ever stood up for me. And she's like, and thank you. And then, of course, a bunch of people around us that were sitting there were like, oh, like I would have jumped in if he did. And I'm like, but the thing is, you didn't. But like, and also the thing is, if multiple people had stood up at the same time, it probably would have diffused even faster and been more yeah exactly and been more effective so grow like if, some if, fucking if, tits. if the five of y'all on the train had showed up for that woman and all gone up to him and be like you need to get away from her he, there would have been nothing he could have done so many people told me after that moment oh he wouldn't have touched you i wouldn't have let that happen and i'm like bitch that's all cute now that he's gone where so the fuck you were you stepped in now but not when he was yelling at her originally or when he was right. threatening to fucking kill me and empty a clip in my fucking stomach. Where the fuck were you? Bitch, I don't give a fuck. Empty a clip in my gut. As long as I'm protecting this girl, I don't give a fuck. I understand the feeling that a lot of city people have about minding your own business. 
And I think that only goes for so far. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mind, minding your own business can work when it's like something inconsequential, like a Karen is complaining or something. And it's like, oh, just a girl, just let her yell herself out. Whatever. Who the fuck cares? This girl but was terrified. When, yeah. Like there are times where you just got to take that that um that position of uncomfort and and stand up for someone or stand up for yourself and she made me cry because i was like i am so sorry that you have to deal with this on a regular place on a regular basis like especially being a black female who's like black females are like the worstly treated and most disrespected people in our society and i'm just like i am so sorry that nobody has ever stood up for you but just know that anytime you're in this situation and i'm fucking around i will always stand up for you bitch yeah it could be very scary yeah it could be very very scary <sighs> all right heavy i think i think that's all i got yeah i got a little <laughs> heavy but, but you know i mean listen these are important things to talk about yeah so i There's know no it's heavy, time like the present and, and i know we make, we make a lot of jokes here we have a good time but there are some times where you got to talk about shit and, and get real for a second for sure. this, this is one of those times because this was a this was a grievous tragedy that could have and should have been avoided um and i'm just so sorry that this has happened for all of O'Shea's family and fan and friends and and people that loved him. You know, my heart goes out to all of y'all. That being said, that's all I have today. Thank you so much for doing this, Issa. Thank you for having time me. With you. I had um, a great time too. You want to let the people know where they can follow you? Anything to promote? Yeah. So if you guys want to follow me, I'm everywhere, literally everywhere online: Instagram, Twitter, um, TikTok, Twitch, YouTube. Are you leaving Twitter now that it's? getting shitty or are you moving to another platform or anything honestly like? threads is not that girl threads isn't and i'm on blue sky and it's also like not that girl yet, i don't even know what that is so Cry blue sky on. blue sky was made by the guy who made twitter it's like his new platform it's still in beta so it's like invite only right now but like it just doesn't have the content to like no i had beef with is. the guy who made twitter and sold it to elon because fuck you for creating such a great platform and selling out bitch so, selling out and for what look at what the fuck he's doing with this shit with, X. with garbage but y'all can find me on twitter as i'll call it and everywhere else as Issa the Queen, Q-W-E-E-N. I have been Jake. You can follow me anywhere at Krogunk or follow the podcast at Poison Touch Pod. You can submit questions at poisontouch.com now that I have a new domain. You can also still use Krogunk.com if that's what you've been using. They both go to the same place. And you can submit uh, questions by calling me at 312-725-6483. We will catch you in a couple weeks for the Am I the Yasshole episode where we read a couple of funny little um, Reddit stories. Reddit and, stories. I love And figure those. out who, who's the dirtiest hoe over there. <laughs> Thank you so much. And we'll catch y'all next time. Woo!